We move on now to the big headline about sexual assault on college campuses. Reports of sexual assaults on campus too numerous to ignore, and yet so many cases remain unreported and unresolved. He was a star athlete at one of America's elite universities who is now generating national outrage after receiving just a six-month sentence for sexually assaulting a young woman. One in five of every one of those young women who's dropped off for that first day of school before they finish school will be assaulted. College campuses across the country are increasingly in the spotlight for sexual assaults on students and how many schools have chosen to pursue charges. 60 universities have been put on notice by the Department of Education for how they've handled sexual assaults. And some of the country's most prestigious colleges are among dozens under scrutiny this morning. Harvard's newspaper finds 12% of the women graduating say they were sexually assaulted at the school. That follows a pattern at colleges nationwide. So making news tonight, two Yale students have been expelled for sexual assault. Columbia's campus becomes a lot smaller once you're you know, trying to avoid your sexual assaulter. A scary attack on the Dartmouth campus. Police say a student raped one of his classmates in her dorm room. The stunning accusations from several young women accusing three male professors at Dartmouth of turning their department into a 21st century animal house, they say, calling it a predator's club. Their accusations last year led to the ouster of three prominent professors in the psychology and brain sciences department at Dartmouth College. A criminal investigation is now underway in New Hampshire. These professors leered at, groped, sexted, intoxicated, and even raped female students. What Dartmouth did was too little too late. Sexual assault happens at every college throughout the nation. According to a 2015 survey by the Association of American Universities, approximately 11.2% of all college students experience rape or sexual assault through physical force, violence, or incapacitation. However, in the past year, Dartmouth only reported 0.5% of students experienced sexual assault, and in 2017, it was only 0.3%. What does it mean that Dartmouth's report is 20 times lower than the national average? Looking at other schools in the Ivy League, Dartmouth College actually has the highest reporting in 2018. And compared to other peer institutions, Dartmouth still ranks fairly high. So where do the numbers that these schools report come from? What do they mean? And can they be improved? Statistics about sexual violence, which include rape, fondling, incest, and statutory rape, are all reported annually in the Cleary Reports. By federal law, all universities that receive federal financial aid have to report instances of these crimes, along with others like burglary, liquor law violations, and even manslaughter, that occur on their campus. The Cleary Act, which mandated the creation and publication of these reports, passed in 1990. Before then, schools were not required to disclose information about the safety of their campuses. There's a woman named Jean Cleary. Um, she was going to Lehigh University. Um, and she was raped and murdered um, and her parents then started um, kind of a, a, a real significant movement um, to, to get more information about the kind of crimes that happen at a university and with the and we're essentially saying um, if we had known that crimes like this happen at a place like this university um, we that they wouldn't have sent their daughter there purpose really around it was to make sure that students and parents um, could be informed about what criminal activity was occurring on college campuses and so it includes not just sexual assault but uh, dating violence and you know homicide and robbery um, other forms of theft and fire safety and, uh, and a way to let, kind of let all families know what does criminal activity look like uh, on their college campuses. It's you know used by you know a, a variety of different people um, for personal information it's used to kind of look at violence and crimes that happens on a college campus um, in, in a variety of ways. 
but these numbers can be complicated and misleading at times. The number of rapes went up by 40% at Dartmouth between the years of 2017 and 2018. Our knee-jerk reaction is to condemn schools with high amounts of sexual assault on their campuses. But currently, the Cleary Act is the only law that regulates what colleges report, and campus police and Title IX offices are the sources for the information found in these reports. This means that a school can only report what has been reported to them. And according to research by the U.S. Department of Justice in 2014, 80% of sexual assaults on campuses are never reported. So what can Cleary reports really tell us about sexual violence on campuses? Uh, the Cleary numbers you know, ha have a purpose, but they're just one small kind of pinpoint or data point um, when, we, when we really look at the full scope of sexual violence on college campuses. Um, you know, having, a, having a number go from 24 to 34 to me and to those of us that do this work really just says that uh, this year we had more students who have experienced harm come forward and, and let someone at the college know. And so for us who work in this field, you know, we want to continue to see numbers um, increase to better match the number of incidences that are actually occurring. When we look at data points, you know, the, the Cleary number also is uh, very specific in what it represents. And so it's inclusive of all reports that were made that year within that calendar year. And so it doesn't mean that's all the incidences that actually occurred that year. It's just the ones that were actually reported that year. We do know also that oftentimes people who graduate or leave here, you know, will come back and make a report and with more of the Me Too movement happening um, and talk around sexual violence and people feeling a little bit more comfortable to, um, to come back and, and report or tell their stories. We often get alumni that are coming back and sharing reports from incidents that occurred in, in 1999 or 2000 or you know, from the 80s when they were here or you know five years ago and so that number captures again not just incidences that occurred like this year but it's ones that have occurred ones that we have been reported this year. Cleary numbers are sometimes the only numbers that colleges report regarding violence and sexual violence on their campus but these figures need to be contextualized from school to school to truly understand what the climate surrounding sexual violence really looks like on every campus. Dartmouth College is trying to change its campus culture through sweeping measures. One of these is the Sexual Violence Prevention Project, or SVPP, which President Hanlon introduced as part of the new initiative, Moving Dartmouth Forward. This program incorporates sexual violence education into students' lives throughout their four years at Dartmouth, focused around campus goals like higher amounts of reporting, as well as less quantifiable goals like healthier relationships and greater rates of bystander intervention. A place where students are especially engaging in this education is within the Greek system. Um, so we have a facilitation tonight for the relationship sex and alcohol um, facilitation done through, um, I want to say the Student Wellness Center. For every new member term, people that are trained through either WISE or SAPA. Uh, so right now that is John Carmichael and then Kyle Sullivan and a couple other people who are also trained. They will do sort of like more internal facilitations talking about what really, uh, what truly affects Alpha Chi a little bit more, more hands-on. Um, and that is a, a conversation that we had actually sync night or like the, their first night was Friday of whenever and they had it on like the day after. And then we're also uh, in the process of creating a new chair position uh, called the, um, the Gender-Based Violence Prevention Chair. Um, and yeah, that's also in the works as well. During a Theta's like baby term, we have the required math facilitation, which is now transferred to SVPP through the Student Wellness Center. Um, and you know, as typical during that discussion, we have or try to have very genuine and in-depth conversations about the problem of sexual assault on campus. Um, and this isn't just for the babies. We usually have three older members come in as well to share their experiences, um, which really helps not only like make the babies more comfortable about talking about it, um, but also say like, hey, this is something that everybody has experienced, even older members. Not that they've experienced sexual assault or violence, but um, that everybody has some context on, in it. I think it's a discussion that constantly needs to happen, like in any space at any point. Like it's not something that you can talk about once and just kind of leave at the wayside. And that's something that happens so often um, with Greek houses. Thankfully, like it, it, do, it doesn't feel like it has to be forced upon anyone. It seems like this is something that, you know, really just like across the board, people do care about. And it, even in something like my position, you know, like 
as as much as this is something that I care about. It's not something that I'm particularly trained in. And so it's really nice to have people like John, like Kyle, other people like that, who um, regardless of the fact that they're, they, they are or they're not uh, exec members, they feel that it's their duty to sort of make the Greek space safer. To say what it means to be a Dartmouth student is to, you know, learn and grow and, and, and sort of be directly involved in sexual violence prevention is, is really, um, it's, you know, from my perspective, it's inspiring and uh, it's, it's an important, like, first, it's an important sort of cobblestone of changing a college campus. Um, no other college campus in the entire country has a four-year uh, mandatory prevention experience that all um, students participate in. Dartmouth may not be leading the country in sexual violence reporting, but they're on their way. Significant efforts are being made on this campus, as well as on other campuses throughout the country, but there is always more work to be done. While Cleary reports help bring problems to light nationwide, they do not tell a comprehensive story. Schools need to be realistic about why sexual assault happens and address it holistically for instances of rape to ever really go down. Right now, we are trying to increase reporting nationwide, but eventually, we want every instance of sexual violence to truly reach zero.